So this week, <laughs> Days Before Rodeo was released on all streaming platforms 10 years after its initial release as a mixtape, yeah. one of Travis Scott's best projects ever, one of the most classic and coveted mixtapes ever released. Um, and it's crazy to think that young, a lot of young people probably heard this project for the first time this week. Do you I think so? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Think, think about young people. The, the yeah. Utopia was their first Travis Scott album, and they're still exploring Rodeo and, and going back in that catalog. That's facts. And I, now they, think about that. I was thinking about that when I was listening to it today. I was like, wow, somebody is having their first listen through Drugs You Should Try It right now. Somebody is hearing Backyard for the first time in their life That's right now on streaming. And it's probably a whole bunch of people. And that was really cool. Um, but this is the this is our weekly segment where we kind of go back to a classic album that might be relevant in current times, re-listen to it, reevaluate it, kind of see how it stood up. And we just we just wanted to talk about it a little. So this week we listened to Days Before Rodeo. Um, what are you guys' initial thoughts coming off this week? Obviously, a lot of people talked about it since it was released on streaming, but how are you feeling about the project? I mean, this is probably my second favorite Travis Scott album. Mm. made me the Travis Scott fan I am today. I think that this was the first time we kind of talked about in the reaction, go watch the old one and the new one. Um, this is the first time I heard trap music sound like this. I think that while I heard Migos popping at the time, while 2 Chains is obviously out, like you're hearing this kind of Southern sound, great production. It hadn't got that epic kind of feel, that like movie feel. And then you start hearing things like Days Before Rodeo a team owl pharaoh even before this you know what i mean you're like this guy travis scott has an energy about him and going back now like i feel all those same feelings and like i'm like just full transparency this is <laughs> i listen to this pretty often yeah you know what i mean this has been on soundcloud and shit like that but i mean just looking at like like you said through the lens of people who are hearing things for the first time i was happy because i think that this is some of travis's best work and really gives them a lot of context for who he's become today yeah, yeah. oh say um, I mean, I enjoyed going back and listening to it. I, I think this for me is Trav in early days. I think probably and based on the songs I selected, um, I don't know if I love this version of Travis. I do feel like he is rapping way more. Yeah. And that is something I appreciate because I do think Travis sounds way hungrier. Obviously he's perfect, trying to perfect his sound. Um, and you hear moments from this product that sound like, uh, like birds and like Astro World and Utopia, um, so I appreciate it for that, and I really like the new songs. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. The one um, blanking on the name, bro, but the one that we all agreed across the board, Serenade. Was the best song, Serenade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, the new songs were great. That song should have been dropped with the original project. Yeah, I'm so kind of surprised you didn't make it. They said that they were from different eras. Oh, really? Like all the songs were from different eras. Um, and they even said that the second half of Most City Flexologist was current day trap. Mm. Um, but I think that the five pack that he dropped for that was only downloadable really, really breathed new life into the album too. Yeah. Um, I've definitely went back and listened to this shit a lot. I really, really, like we said, love Serenade, but this is bro. He's Travis Scott is a generational artist. Yeah. He really, really can't be taken for granted. And I think that when we really highlight how consistent he's been throughout the years and like not many people's first, second body of work is sounding like this. No, that's a fact. Yeah. I was thinking about that today too, where I was like, is this his best project? Probably not. Probably second. I like yeah. that you said that, but it, it's in contention in a really competitive discography. And I was like, wow, are there really mixtapes better than this? This is that S tier mixtape where there is not a single miss. There was one song that I was less familiar with than the rest of it. Um, because Dang I also... Freestyle? Huh? No. Um, no. Zombies. Oh. That what? was the one song that I hadn't like consistently played throughout my life or since it dropped. Yeah. And I was like, wow, this is incredible. Yeah. Now it's a full all the way through. You know what I mean? Literally no skips. Yeah, I think this is probably my favorite mixtape of all time. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I put it behind Acid Rap, uh, <laughs> but it's probably number two. What? Yeah. No disrespect to Chance. That album is legendary, but you're saying that Acid Rap in 2024 holds up better than Days Before Rodeo. Yeah, just to me, yeah. Subject matter, like I like I like uh, what Trance is talking about on Acid Rap a little more, and it was more important to me in my in twenty twenty four though. You listen to both albums back well, to back. I, well, there's no way that I can remove what Acid Rap did for me as a hip hop fan. So like that, yes, I like Acid Rap more, um, but I don't want to make this about that because this is this is that class yeah, that tier of a mixtape. I I would say, um, I don't know. I think Acid Rap aged 
not so well. Really? I, would, yeah. I, would, I went back and listened to it. I, I didn't like it as much. Yeah. It, we'll talk about trap. It's great, great music though, but like, yeah, it just it doesn't you. it didn't hit the same as it did in high school. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. Um, what do you think your favorite song of this mixtape is? Backyard, unquestionably, it's been my favorite song. It's my favorite Travis Scott song ever. Um, really? Yeah, I think that just like the like the opening bars are like the best thing ever. Just like because this is like a young nigga album. Yeah, you know what I mean when you're. With your homies, you know, what I mean? go grab that fifth, grab that eighth, grab what you need, blow that dope, don't get like that shit is fire, bro. That just embodies like being outside with your homies, not needing too much to go have fun, but just kind of being together. Yeah. You know what I mean? And being outside <clears throat> and getting into fuck shit. That's like, I don't know, bro. Travis, we were kind of talking about it before. He's never really been the most lyrical, but he's like the people's champ, I feel like. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like he's just kind of a fun, high energy guy that like he doesn't have any like bad vibes. He's just like, yo, like. While out, have fun, let go for a little bit. You know, this should be an escape. Life is fun. Mm -hmm. You know, it feels like he's living life to the fullest, and like these songs reflect that. Yeah, but backyard's my favorite. Oh, say, um, either Mama Sita, Sloppy Toppy, or I feel like drugs. You can, you should try it. It's just like a classic. Think of classic. Three songs. Classic. Nah, drugs. You should try it. Is different. Yeah, bro. drugs. You should try it. Is like it's probably the best song in that project. I was gonna say. If you were showing someone, like if someone asked, like, why is Travis Scott who he is, I might play that song. Yeah, that's, you know a, that's I mean? a fair pick. That's, I think I think I probably like Backyard the best as well, uh, but Mama Cita is a close second because I think Mama Cita has the best beat on the on the tape. Mm -hmm. And I, what do you what do you guys think the best instrumental on there is? Mm. Mm. Best instrumental. The prayer is crazy. Like the prayer is like low key just a slow song. Quintana, yeah. But that's like a very similar beat to. Well, no, that's not true. Quintana part two is crazy. The transition from Amasita into Quintana is is one of my favorite parts. I it mean, feels like it's like the same song almost. So it just like like changes key a little bit because of the way Mamacita moves from the start to the finish, and then it just like. Ups it a little bit for Quintana, bro. Just the outro, Quintana. Yeah, oh, yeah. I don't know. I, it's it's a. There's no misses. You hit it on the head with that. You know what I mean? This is a perfect album. <clears throat> there, yeah. There. Perfect trap. Perfect trap album for the time too. Yeah. Very necessary for the genre. Um. Favorite feature. Rich Homie Corn. On uh, <laughs> what song is he on? Uh, Mama Cita. Oh, that's right. You're crazy. Um, it's not even close. It's Young Thug on Skyfall. Yeah, Thug's. I mean, Thug's good on Mama Cita too. Yeah, but it's Young Thug on Skyfall. I I just feel like the fucking Rich Homie Quan era, like that's his peak, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's peak Rich Homie Quan. That's that is debatably the best Young Thug verse ever on Skyfall. Yes, debatably, okay. debatably. I'm, I'm yeah, not, I'm not arguing. I just said, that's, what's the best feature? In my opinion, <laughs> I've never thought of it um, like that. I think it's great. I think it's great. Yeah, I'm. I'm not mad at that. Sla Migos on Sloppy Toppy is also fire. Insane. Yeah. Insane. Fire. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Um, ugh, Travis. Travis was really locked in with his people and he stayed locked in with them and they've all aged great together. Yeah. You know, like Quavo and Travis even still, Young Thug and Travis even still today. Like Metro's um, on this project. Metro body that. Yeah, like man. it's, Travis is always that connective tissue, you know? Yeah. He's dope. Um, It was cool to see the way he rolled this out too. Yeah. For the for the ten year anniversary with a merch bundle collab with Spider with a D to C five dollar five pack. Mm -hmm. I really liked the way that they kind of breathed new life into this album and kind of made it a really big moment. I mean, because I think I think he recognized how big this was. Yeah. I think that this is one of them, you know. And as we get away from the era of the mixtape where you're dropping everything the same way, I think that Travis really needed to highlight, like, yo, this changed the game. Like what you're hearing now, like a lot of these niggas is my sons for real. You know, and this started the shit. Yeah. Whatever you tripping off them doing now, like, bro, like this is what we were on, you know? And not on even though condescending shit, but like he knows what this is worth and how quality this music was. So I love that he's taking the time to really like show this moment like the love it deserves. Yeah, me too. Um <laughs> any it, other thoughts on uh on days before? I just think that Travis is Travis is entering that era. He's entering that time. <clears throat> I think that if he could get a, like one more really crazy album, we're going to have to start talking about him differently. Yeah. Really, really uh, I have to put some respect on his name and what he's done for what? 10 plus? 10 years, yeah. That's a thing. Because this is like, he came out about 2012, 2013. 
I mean, this came out in 2014. 2014, yeah. Right? I think this was 2013. 2014. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 10 years, bro. Yeah. Awesome. Crazy 10-year run. Yeah.